Hello, I'm Brett Boggs, Superintendent of the Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation. On Thursday, September the 7th, Tippecanoe Valley began a two-day process of honoring our eighth class of distinguished alumni. Distinguished alumni are graduates of Tippecanoe Valley High School or any of the district's prior high schools, Akron, Beaverdam, Burkett, Mentone, and Talma. The distinguished alumni may be living or deceased and have led successful lives while making substantial contributions to their chosen field of work or have provided outstanding service to their community, state, or country. The class of 2017 consists of six graduates of Tipkin Valley High School and single graduates of Beaverdam High School and Mentone High School. The eight inductees into the class of 2017 were honored with a formal dinner at Tippecanoe Valley Middle School. Following the dinner, the inductees were introduced and interviewed by local radio personality Rita Price. Each inductee also introduced and spoke about an educator or educators that had a significant impact on their life. Induction Day activities followed on Friday, September the 8th at Tippecanoe Valley High School. The day opened with a welcome breakfast when the inductees were introduced to the student liaisons that would accompany them throughout the day. Each inductee then made four presentations to groups of freshmen through seniors in which they shared their high school, career, and life experiences. This proved to be a beneficial time for the students of Tippecanoe Valley High School as they learned about the outstanding accomplishment of these distinguished individuals. The students realized that earning a diploma from Tippecanoe Valley High School through hard work and by taking advantage of the many opportunities available to them was an important initial step in the successful life of each inductee. The inductees toured the school followed by lunch where they had the opportunity to speak with individual students. Following lunch, the inductees participated in the individual interviews you are about to enjoy. Induction day concluded when the inductees into the Tippecanoe Valley Distinguished Alumni Class of 2017 were introduced at halftime of the home football game. A brief biography was read aloud as each inductee was presented a beautiful memorial commemorative plaque. Nominations are being accepted for the Tippecanoe Valley Distinguished Alumni Class of 2018. Anyone who would like to submit a nomination may obtain a nomination form from any Tippecanoe Valley school, the administration office, or the Tippecanoe Valley website. Online nominations may also be made by visiting the Tippecanoe Valley website. Finally, I would like to thank the Rochester Telephone Company for recording the interviews with our distinguished alumni. The Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation appreciates our strong partnership with RTC TV and the support provided for our schools and the community. Now it's time to meet the members of the Tippecanoe Valley Distinguished Alumni Class of 2017. Uh, my name is Mike Biddle. Uh, I graduated from Tippecanoe Valley High School in um, 1996. I'm Craig Royette. I graduated from Tippecanoe Valley High School in 1993. You're here Wayne Cumberland. I graduated Beaver Dam High School in 1958. Uh, my name is Jose Jurado. I graduated in 2009 from Tippecanoe Valley High School. I'm Ashley Lindenmeyer. I graduated from Tippecanoe Valley High School in 2004. I'm Teresa Petrosky-Wallace. I graduated from Tippecanoe Valley High School in 1978. My name is Dan Tucker. I graduated from Tippecanoe Valley High School in 1991. Uh, my name is Rodney Williams and I graduated from Mentone High School in 1972. My most memorable moment um, goes back to sport. Uh, my sophomore year playing uh, varsity at outside linebacker. Um, we had an awesome group of seniors and juniors, um, and there were only three of us sophomores that got the privilege to play varsity. So uh, we're playing Bremen, 
Um, we're down 19 to 6. Uh, four minutes to go. Their fans start leaving, and I just found out this morning apparently some of our fans were leaving. Um, so I had my head down. I'm 16. I got my head down. I think we're beat. And uh, Coach Moriarty, Stephen, was a junior. Um, Rick Shoemaker and Jeremy Cox all come over to me and said, if you're going to be out here, you got to get your head up. There's still time on the clock. We still have a chance. For me, the reason I remember that as the most memorable moment is because <clears throat> as long as there's still time that we have, I mean, there's still time on the clock in life, we can do whatever we want. Nothing's over until it's over. So that's my most memorable moment. I mean, we come back, won the game 20 to 19, and it proved it. So, yep. uh, most memorable moment, there are a few. Um, probably uh, hanging out with friends was pretty important to me. I had a lot of really good friends out here. It was really hard my junior year. Um, at the end of my junior year, one of my best friends moved out of state to Florida. So I was pretty, uh, pretty devastated by that. But at the same time, uh, a family member of ours took in a foreign exchange student from Germany. So it was like the missing slot of uh, the one friend moving to Florida was filled with uh, the foreign exchange student who came in and who became a really good friend of ours. And so our senior year was a lot of fun. So that's, that's very memorable to me. Uh, that's probably the, the best memory um, from high school. Well, that many years ago, they're kind of hard to recall. I do have a couple things stand out. At Beaver Dam, the principal lived right beside the high school and had a great big uh, St. Bernard dog named Sparky. So we quite often let him in to visit school and roam the hallways. And uh, never got too much trouble for that. Also, I was in band and played, we played the basketball games. And <clears throat> apparently one game we didn't play, get practice well enough got there to the ball game, got started. One by one, we kept dropping out and we got down to where we all quit. So it was kind of embarrassing. Everybody said, after looking at each other, and what do we do now? We just quit. Um, we had a senior trip back then too, a little bit different than the senior trips today, but we went to Washington, D.C. and uh, New York and Hershey, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> Washington, D.C. Uh, went up, of course, the Washington Monument and um, New York, we went to um, Statue of Liberty. At that time, you'd go up into the uh, storage. I don't think you do that today. And I was scared of heights and went up that torch. It was an open stairway. I mean, of course, a small open stairway. You could see down. You had to watch you didn't hit your head on the one above you. I made it up there. I was sweating the time I got there. But anyway, it was quite an experience going up that. And riding the sub, as I say, riding the subway in New York, and one of the last things, um, for some reason, we, we, of course, had two sponsors. Always that man, lady. One of them left. The lady left. We never did find out why. She just took off and left, and we were by ourselves. But we did well. We behaved ourselves. So. I think my most memorable moment would be my senior year. I did a senior prank where I we had a, we had a convocation that day. And right before everyone was getting ready to be dismissed, I asked to go use the restroom. And I went out and went to the computer lab and I hacked into the, into the PA system and I played music for five to 10 minutes and the office couldn't figure out how to turn it off. And uh, that, was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> now I'm told you did that with the... Um Approval of the principal, correct? Yes, okay. uh, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Dorman. Say it's still not too late to yes. uh, give a little time out. <laughs> Most memorable moment in high school would likely be with Mr. Cumberland. Um, I had a few classes with him my senior year, um, and at that point, I think he was he was ready to retire and get rid of all of us knuckleheads. But we kept him. Uh, excited and engaged and so uh, those classes my senior year were some of the most memorable moments. I ran track in high school and I'm old enough that the races were still in yards rather than meters and so I ran the 220 yard dash, I ran the 880 relay and I long jumped. Um, my dad with whom I was always very close worked in a job that really didn't allow him to come to very many track meets and so I do remember him coming to about two or three track meets and in most of them something really interesting happened and the one that I, I remember the most is we were running the 880 relay 
and we had a substitute as our first leg of the relay. Um, she got behind by quite a bit. The second leg of the relay also got behind. Um, I usually ran third or fourth in this particular race I was running fourth so the handoff went to the third leg and she was really fast she was really good and she made up 10 of the 20 yards that we were behind and I got the baton and I was still 10 yards behind and I just burned I just burned it and this was one of the tracks that that you know it was a, a long curve and you know you weren't supposed to pass on a curve but I was burning it and I could hear my dad cheering I could hear my dad cheering for me, and I passed that girl on the curve, and honest to goodness, she stopped and said, she thought she was so far ahead. She stopped when I passed her and said, oh, something. And my dad was there to see that, and we won that relay, and we ended up winning the meet because we won that relay, and my dad was there to see it, and that was really memorable. Uh, my most memorable moment in high school would be I guess I got on the homecoming court as a junior with Amy Peterson, and I thought that was a pretty cool thing because I kind of laid low in high school. At least I thought I laid low, and that was a kind of a big honor for me. And I, I just, that was a highlight. My most memorable moment in high school is pretty well fixed in it my mind. It was when my science teacher uh, pulled me inside and asked me if uh, I wanted to continue on in the uh, unmature moments that I had or if I was thinking that maybe I should uh, grow up and make some application of my life. Me as a high school student I enjoy the most um, sports. I'll always preach sports. Um, education is number one, but for me, sports was right up there close to it. Um, it taught me a whole lot of life lessons. It allowed me um, to channel my frustrations, my anger, all the things that I had inside. Um, it allowed me to channel that in a positive way, and it made me accountable. So if I wanted to do the things that I liked, I had to toe the line. So, As a high school student, uh, what I enjoyed the most was, again, it would be uh, the the aspect of having a lot of friends out here in the social network. Um, also, I would say uh, playing on the golf team was important to me. I had a real close network of friends on the golf team and uh, during golf season our home course was in Warsaw so every night we would drive up to uh, Rosella Ford Golf Course in Warsaw and that was a, a lot of fun and those, I'll always have those memories and still have a lot of those friends from that. I guess one thing, we were a small school, Beaver Dam, we only had 12 in the whole class. So you got to know your classmates quite well, work together, and you see each other and associate uh, with each other. And I joined sports too, as in basketball, of course we didn't have football, basketball, baseball, and track. So, uh, and of course that's band, but that was a different experience, right? I think what I enjoyed most was uh, the teachers. Uh, they were, uh, they were all really good people that I could rely on to go out and I was, I'm just curious by nature so I, I like to have answers and I could just go to any teacher and just ask any question and they were there at any time to just answer anything. I loved the atmosphere here at Tippecanoe Valley. Uh, it, was, it felt like family. I had many close friends. Um, when I was chosen for this award, I was asked to provide the name of a few teachers that were re really influential for me, and it was hard, and I think that speaks volumes of uh, the staff and faculty here at this uh, school corporation. The people. I enjoyed the people. Friends, classmates, teammates, teachers, coaches, the relationships that I made here were very valuable to, be, to me. And the fact that I still have a lot of those friends, and some of them are still very close to me, makes it even more of a joy to me, the people that I met here. I enjoyed anatomy classes and science classes a lot, and I enjoyed playing sports. And ran uh, track, played some basketball and football as well, all through high school, and learned a lot from that. <clears throat> as I look back at high school now, I have to say that I really enjoyed the students and the camaraderie that 
all the students and the teacher had. It seemed like everybody was working toward a common goal. It was graduation. Some of us were more prepared than others, but every day when I came, we all met for, a, for the same goal. Um, I continued my education. I got my Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree from Bethel College in Mishawaka. Um, I didn't go to school, to college until seven years after high school, but um, I did accomplish that. Um, the other thing is I went to auction school 2014 to become a licensed auctioneer in the state um, of Indiana. So those are the two degrees that I hold and license I hold. After I graduated from Tippecanoe Valley, I went on to uh, Manchester College University now and uh, obtained my business administration degree from there. I was going to major in pharmacy. I had an uncle who was a pharmacist and he thought I should major in pharmacy at Butler. So I <clears throat> enrolled at Butler and went down there and that was a really different experience. Beaver Dam, we never had chemistry. Couldn't even take it, we didn't have it. And when I got to Butler, because I was going to major in pharmacy, you had to take the <laughs> second level course. You couldn't take the beginning level. Well, never having chemistry, I was lost from day one. Couldn't even check out my lab drawer. I didn't know what the equipment was, what it was called. Had to have uh, my assistant help me. And uh, first experience in classroom, he started talking about moles. I had no idea in the world what a mole was. All I could think of was a little guy who went through the ground, tore up the yard. And uh, to this day, I still don't understand the mole, and I don't guess I don't really care. So uh, that was uh, Butler. And then from that point on, I knew that I did not understand chemistry, so no way I could continue on. So then I decided to drop out of Butler, <clears throat> come to Manchester College, and uh, majored in math. <clears throat> so we majored in math, and I enjoyed that in high school, and, and uh, had a good high school teacher, and two excellent teachers at Manchester College, which uh, prepared me well to continue on to mathematics and uh, continue on to Notre Dame. And then uh, graduated in 1962, and that time we had Sputnik up, and that made a big spice with education, trying to get the high schools up to a higher level with the students. So the National Science, National Science Foundation was formed and offered the schooling for high school teachers to raise their level of uh, competency. So I decided, well, they're supposed to have three years experience to apply. I had one. <laughs> but I thought, you know, I'll try it. I told the kids today, go for it. You know, all, all they can say is no. So I applied from Notre Dame and luckily got in and went to there as a quite an intense program with uh, going five summers for, yeah, five summers with uh, six weeks each time. But I made it through. So that was no dream. After I graduated high school, I went to Purdue University. I got my Bachelor's of Science in Computer Engineering uh, with an emphasis in software. And I graduated in 2013. After I graduated from high school, I went to Valparaiso University in Valparaiso, Indiana, which is an hour west of um, the Akron area. There I uh, studied several different things. I majored in political science and Spanish and then had a minor in business and humanities. After that, I then went to Indiana University School of Law uh, to pursue my law degree there. After high school, I went to Purdue University and got my bachelor's degree in psychology. And following that, I went to Kansas State University and I got my master's in family and child development with a specialization in marriage and family therapy. Uh, after high school, I went to Ball State from 1991 to 95. I uh, graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Exercise Science and Physiology, and then worked for a few years, kind of trying to find what I really wanted, and then went back to school to the University of Indianapolis in 98, uh, in which time I did a kind of a summer intensive program through the University of Indianapolis for a uh, physical therapy assistance degree, which is an associate's degree in physical therapy. Due to my discussion with uh, Dr. Gam Victor Gamble, 
uh, I had already applied to Indiana, uh, well, Purdue University at uh, Fort Wayne. Uh, so I started there in the summer. Uh, I went to uh, Hun uh, Huntington College in my junior years. In the meantime, I had attended one year in Mackinac College on Mackinac Island. Uh, that school closed and I finished with a Bachelor's of Science in the Sciences at uh, Huntington College in Huntington, Indiana. Uh, my career path, um, nursing led me to, I worked in ER right out of nursing school. Um, I also went and worked in surgery. Surgery became my specialty. Um, I really enjoyed surgery a lot. Um, I worked mainly, I'd probably say my biggest specialty was spine surgery. Um, I worked for four spine surgeons um, for about three years, pretty intense. Um, but I've done everything but hearts and brains on surgery. Um, I've been a supervisor, a manager. Um, I felt a different, someone like me always has to have something I'm chasing. Um, I have to have something that I can set a goal to and achieve. Um, so I, kind of a running joke for a while was about being an auctioneer because I like to talk. Um, the joke became a reality. Um, we currently have a bit of auction company. We opened our auction company um, and we have auctions. We do real estate and all that stuff. So yeah, auction business. I'm still licensed as a nurse. So. Right after college, uh, it was a little bit difficult in 1997 to find uh, a job with a business degree within a 50 to 75 mile radius. Uh, I sent my resume out and it took a little bit of time. Uh, fortunately, I ended up, my first job out of college was selling insurance for Smith Sawyer and Smith Insurance in Rochester. That was a really good experience. I did that for about four and a half years. And from there, I uh, made a career move to Pike Lumber in Akron. What do you do at Pike Lumber? Uh, presently, I serve as the sales manager and executive vice president of the company. Started out first job was teaching at Jim Down, which is up by Elkhart, junior high. Second year, I went to Bremen, which is junior high. And um, I just didn't quite care for that. junior high math, it just wasn't a challenge. And of course, being a new teacher, the uh, junior high students were something else at that age. So I decided, you know, change again. So the opening came up at uh, Akron High School. So I decided to uh, go to Akron, which went in 1964. I think the first or second year, they gave me a half day at Akron, a half day at Mendona. I said, none of that. But, you felt like you didn't belong in either place. You didn't get to know the teachers, you didn't know the kids, you didn't know what was going on, really. So I said, give me one or the other. So they put me at Akron, that's where I spent 40 years there at Akron. Yeah. So that was till, till they opened school in 74 here, and then moved out here to high school in 1974. So right after high school, I got my first job in Chicago at Spot Trading. Uh, they were a trading company and I managed a lot of the back-end infrastructure to help maintain reliability across all uh, trading platforms. And uh, ESPN reached out to me t through LinkedIn and I applied and I got a job. So now I'm currently at ESPN in Bristol, Connecticut. I'm a DevOps engineer there um, with a focus on reliability and uh, automation. So I like to automate a lot of the uh, back-end processes that help maintain uh, some of the video platforms that people use on the ESPN app or the Watch ESPN application. After graduating law school, I worked in the legal field in Indianapolis. I did employment and injury law, and I did that for about four years before I threw my hat in the ring for the special agent selection process for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I was fortunate enough to make it through that process, which was about a 14-month long um, interview, I guess, and uh, spent five months at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia, and now I am a special agent with the Bureau. I am currently happily employed as retired, but um, for 32 years I worked in some um, area of helping professions. So with my background in 
psychology and family and child development, and then the specialization in marriage and family therapy. There were a lot of opportunities open to me when I got out of graduate school, and my major professor said, sample things. Try a few different things in human services and see where you fit. And so I did that. Right after graduate school, I went to the suburbs of Chicago, and I worked in youth service agencies, a couple of different things. The um, most um, significant one was I was a counselor at a crisis-oriented youth service agency. And we did crisis intervention. We worked with um, students who were on the verge of dropping out of school, students who were runaways, various things like that. We also did outreach. We went into students' homes. We went into schools. And we also had to do um, emergency foster placement at times. So I, I did that in Chicago and a, and a couple of other things in Chicago wasn't quite the right fit yet. And then I moved to Wyoming from Chicago. And when I first got there, I worked um, as a therapist at a community mental health center. And then I also worked in residential treatment, again, for, for troubled teens. And n none of those were really the right thing. And then I found my, my dream job setting at Casper College. Casper College is a two-year school, but we also have the University of Wyoming at Casper housed on campus. And then we have other affiliate schools that provide degrees. So students can get anything from a one-year certificate in welding to a master's degree in social work. And my first job at Casper College was as a grant coordinator for a special populations grant. And special populations included students with disabilities, either physical disabilities or learning disabilities, students who spoke English as a second language, students who were um, living in poverty, students who were coming out of the legal system, just a variety of people who were perhaps at risk for dropping out of school. And I coordinated services for them and that, there was a lot of variety in that. Sometimes people would come and just need a list of food banks in town because they were starving. It's hard to be a good student if you're starving. Sometimes students would come to me with suicidal thoughts and I had to work them through that. Sometimes they needed bus vouchers, they needed transportation, just a variety of things. It was a great job, but it was on soft money. It was a grant program and we didn't know if the money was um, going to be there every year. So I wanted to stay at Casper College. It was the right setting. I knew it was the right setting. And it just happened that a job came open in counseling and student development. And that was my dream job at my dream place. In that job as a counselor, I was doing pre-enrollment consultation, I was doing academic advising, career counseling, personal counseling, I was teaching, I was doing programming, and I loved that, and I worked at that for 15 years. And then my supervisor left, and the administration asked me to take over as the director of counseling and move into an administrative position. And so for the last um, six years, of my career as a helping professional. I was the Director of Counseling in the Campus Wellness Center at Casper College. I'm currently employed at uh, Casper Casper Community Hospital. We are a contract group called Northern Lakes Rehabilitation. We provide the physical and occupational and speech therapy services for the hospital, outpatients and inpatients. I've been there since 2000. I also worked there from 95 to 98. Had a brief interim at Laporte Hospital, in which I worked in cardiac rehab, and then I worked for the medical group in Michigan City in physical therapy before I came back to uh, this area and to the hospital in 2000. I would like to call it a career path, but I think it was more of a career journey. Um, some of us have talked about getting out and trying things. I actually shot for a career path. I started with uh, Hewlett Packard uh, with a chemistry degree. Um, and worked there for some time until I realized that that wasn't really the activity that I was interested in. Uh, there were several other companies, I guess, uh, that I went to in uh, internship. They either turned out uh, to be bought or purchased by one company or another, but the thing that I would say that I followed as a career was I always stayed true to the hard sciences. Uh, the hard the chemistry, math, and physics, that allowed me to get through companies like DuPont or uh, Hewlett Packard uh, and in a certain case I even went out and tried uh, my own company with uh, two of my friends. That was probably uh, one of the best things I'd done.
With nursing, I, be, I truly believe um, that you're called to do certain things in life. Um, one of the biggest things, transitioning from actual being in the hospital and being in surgery to being an auctioneer, that's quite a big jump, a difference. Um, but I truly believe God calls us to the certain spots in our life for whatever period of time that may be. I, I don't fully understand the reasons, uh, maybe I never will, um, but for nursing, I was called to that that time and to do that. Um, also for, for me, it helped with a sense of accomplishment, getting my bachelor's. With auctioneering, the, the similarities between nursing and auctioneering, I still help people. I still help people who are in crisis. A family member passes away and they need to liquidate the estate. Um, those are serious issues that you still, it's that whole nursing spectrum of taking care of the patient. It's just we call them clients now instead of patients. So, I chose my career, uh, I started out in college uh, majoring in education and I decided after a couple years that really didn't suit my, uh, my interests. So I took a, an aptitude test and it basically led me into studying business. So, so that's pretty much what led me down that path. I'd, I'd had an interest in working at Pike Lumber Company since college, and it was the first place that I uh, actually sent my resume out of college. And unfortunately, at the time, they weren't hiring folks with business degrees. So five years later, I had heard they were, so I reapplied, and it's been a really, really good uh, career. So. Well, said I could do chemistry, <laughs> so uh, I did enjoy the math, and uh, I guess I say it looked like my high school teacher, and uh, thought maybe you know teaching education would be something I could do and enjoy, and I think I'm glad I made the choice that I did. So I knew I wanted to work with computers back in kindergarten. Uh, I started school without really speaking any English, and. I remember going to school every day looking forward to spend time on the computer because that was the only thing I could communicate with. And ever since then I just wanted, I had that like innate curiosity to just figure out more about computers and I'm um, help making them now. It was a surprise for me. I think most people who knew me back when I was in high school would be shocked to find that I am where I am today. I thought I always wanted to be an attorney when I grew up and I, that's what I was good at. I was good at talking and arguing and writing and those are kind of the three main things as an attorney. Um, but I did that for a few years, got bored with it, and decided to take the leap and see if I could even make it this far. And the more I got into the interviewing process, the months at the academy and now today, it's, it's pretty apparent to me that this was the right decision. It just took some gentle nudging, I guess, to get there. I always knew that I wanted to help people. I always felt like I had that calling to, to be of service to others. And I was kind of the listener and the nurturer in my friend group in high school. And so it just seemed like a, a good fit to go into the helping professions and particularly into the counseling area. I had some injuries as a young person at Akron um, and had to do some physical therapy and remember very vividly uh, the therapist that I worked with there. And the head PT there was actually a man, Tom Johnson, that I ended up working for for many years um, here in the early 2000s. And those injuries and just the way the therapist worked with me, you know, as a young person, you don't, you know, typically when you're injured, you don't know what's going on. It's kind of vague to you. And uh, they're just, I always remember very, being very uh, strong and, you know, very forceful kind of yet compassionate and caring and, and it just helped a lot. I, I guess that always stuck with me that I thought I might be interested in that sort of thing. Uh, you know, it really has to go back to uh, that short discussion with uh, Vic in uh, high school. It, it really does. Uh, there were many things to do at the time. Uh, he got me to reflect on things that would allow me to help other people. Uh, Chemistry at that time, uh, it's a little less known now. Uh, better living through chemistry was kind of a positive statement at that time, and I still believe it's quite true. The most challenging aspect of my career, one of our distinguished alumni had talked about it, Dan, it's working with people. Um, you, we had a phrase for a long time about being on stage, off stage. 
Um, as a nurse, um, I mean, it could apply to any, any career, any whatever job you do. Um, when you're on stage, you got to check yourself at the door. I mean, so whatever's going on in your life, whatever happened at home, whatever happened that morning, you can't let that flow through to your patients um, because you are seeing them, some of them at their worst time, um, some of them at their best time, some of them most vulnerable times. Um, so dealing with people and understanding that each person is an individual and that none of them are cookie cutter people. Um, and then in the same thing, keeping yourself in check so that they don't suffer from your problems. Probably the most challenging aspect of my career, we have uh, over 200 employees company-wide and we have customers all over the globe and we have owners, uh, shareholders and when you put all of that puzzle together it's, uh, it's, it's kind of an objective to make everybody satisfied. You want your employees to be happy, you want your customers to be happy and obviously we want our owners to be happy so it's, uh, it's quite a puzzle to try to, to make all the all that come out. In fact, one of the one of the gentlemen that I work with, he says it's hard to make the coffee come out with the donuts, and it's it's similar to that. So every day is a challenge. It's a new uh, every day. There's a new problem to deal with uh, or a new opportunity. So from one day to the next, it's it's hard to tell what we'll encounter. Um, but it's a it's a good business to be in. And you learn keep, when you learn how to keep everybody happy, let me know. It's impossible. <laughs> Although they, well, it depends where you're at in there. Probably the most challenging thing to get ready from my career was Notre Dame. It was, <laughs> to me, it was tough. They were very demanding, and the, the uh, five, let's say five years of intense study. You only took two classes a year, but I mean two classes of each session, each uh, summer. But they were quite deeply involved because uh, you had to take. Uh, comprehensive exam at the end. And so after you five, five years, going back to what you did what you did five years ago in math was quite a challenge. So you learn to take excellent notes. Each day I would go home and rewrite them. Rewrite them so I could read them later. And uh, that was full time during the summer. School was all you could do, I mean didn't have any playtime, weekends, I was no name at the library, and very, very demanding. But, again, but the other thing, too, uh, demanding was in the high school, trying to get the students to do the best they could to do the work and uh, work to the fullest potential, trying to get them to achieve that. Okay, thank you. I think the most challenging aspect would be disconnecting. Um, all of us have a computer at home, I have a computer at home, and there's um, like serving sports, there's sports at all times of the day. We cover sports in Europe and in Asia and in the US, so there's sports uh, at 24 hours a day. So at any time I could get a call to go help someone out or it's, it's just hard to sort of disconnect and take time to just unwind. The most challenging aspect of my job is, unfortunately, I see a lot of the worst of the worst. Um, so at times it, it gets you down and at times it makes you feel like you've lost hope in humanity. But seeing how you're able to make a difference uh, in people's lives and your community, I think it makes it all worthwhile. One of the biggest challenges, I think, for anybody working in mental health is to learn that we must take care of ourselves as well as taking care of everyone else. It's like the oxygen masks on an airplane. They always tell you put your own on first so you can keep breathing while you're helping other people. And that was something that I had to learn. I have to be good to myself before I can be any good to anybody else. And that's a lesson that most of us have to learn over and over again throughout our careers. And it can be very difficult because there are days with multiple crises, there are days with <clears throat> life and death situations, and it was sometimes a challenge to be able to catch my breath. I really think that, you know, after you get past the studying, you know, knowing how muscles and everything works, I think the challenge is working with people every day, all day, different people, 
from happy people to not so happy people to really angry people to people that are in a lot of pain, you know, from young, you know, athletes to the older folks. I think that's the challenge, is presenting yourself in a very positive way and being almost like their cheerleader all day long and keeping up all the time because we can't we can't really have a bad day. So I think that's the challenge. It would be <clears throat> people and different views and, and different attitudes. It, uh, when you start out with somebody, uh, it seems that there's always an opportunity for you to learn uh, what angle they're coming at or what's their background or what's their presupposition about what's going on. And, and if you can learn that or you can gain their respect through taking the time to understand what's important in their life, it makes your ability to work with them so much better. But they seem to all be individuals. Um, to balance out my professional responsibilities, I've, I coach. Um, coaching is a hobby, a passion. Um, it's uh, everything that I'm missing if, if I'm not coaching. Um, for me, that's, that takes up most of my time. Um, that's my hobby. Um, when it's with my family, um, we're just Netflix and chill, which I heard is not a cool thing to say anymore. Um, yeah, we, you know, coaching and, and then just having to spend time with the family. Okay. Um, Hobby-wise, uh, my family and I, we, we like to spend time together as a family. My wife and I, we have four children. Uh, so we like to walk, we like to bike. Recently we have bought some kayaks, so we're getting into that. Uh, so those are some activities that, as a family, we do. Um, we also like to travel. So. I don't know if it's exactly a hobby, but uh, for 15 years, before I retired teaching, for 15 years I drove charter motor coaches. And that was quite interesting. The people you got to meet, the whole realm of people, the places you got to go, went to many different places, you know, uh, Washington, D.C., many, many trips to Chicago, Indianapolis. Memphis, Tennessee, New Orleans, Florida, to, to uh, Disneyland, and it was interesting, but, um, you know, you got there and then think, what do you do, because they charter a bus a day, of course, they plan to use the whole day, so many, much time as they spend at these places, you didn't basically have anything to do except sit there, but it was a couple of places that were good, uh, one was Cubs game, Cubs would uh, go there to game, they knew the bus driver, they let you in, say, say any who you want. Uh, if somebody comes to, you know, their seat, give it to them, so no problem. So we did that. So that was okay. I enjoyed the uh, bus driving, the place we got to go. So all of my family's here in uh, Indiana, so I like to travel back during the holidays and uh, special events to come back and visit the family. And I also like to travel around the area, out on the East Coast, so I make trips to Boston, New York, uh, New Hampshire, Rhode Island. Last year I was able to go to Europe for the first time and I did a backpacking trip out there. I always like to explore new areas and learn new things about just different cultures and different areas and regions. I've been very fortunate to end up in Florida so that makes for um, a lot of activities to be involved in. My husband and I both really like kayaking and uh, water sports so we will do that. Uh, in our free time, we have a couple of dogs that keep us pretty busy, so we'll take them out and about on hikes and various things like that. So being in Florida, we're able to be outside often, which is really nice. All through my life, my school years, my working years, and now in retirement, I have always loved to dance. Dancing is one of my greatest joys. It is a great stress reducer. I also love to read and I write fiction. And I participate in community theater, primarily acting, but I also direct, I also do backstage work. Um, so I, I have enjoyed all of those things throughout my career. As far as our family is concerned, we love to travel together. Even though my kids are um, all adults now, we, my husband and I always read aloud to them almost every night. It was a really good way to connect the family back together at the end of a really long, stressful day. 
I have two young children, which <clears throat> occupy most of my free time. Um, we like to camp. We li I like to hunt and fish um, when I can. Um, I like to be outdoors. Really, outdoors would be the main thing. I try to get my kids outside. We have just a place in the country with a few chickens and you know just a little dog and stuff. And we just we just try to do anything outside we can do possibly. We like to kayak some. We like to spend some time at the lake with friends and just things like that. My wife and I now our our family has grown. We like to. Uh, we take hikes and we go for walks. Uh, we also go flying. I, I fly on the side. Uh, we have two grandchildren now and that's a, a new challenge and commitment. So we actually spend a lot of time with the grandchildren. And that's a lot of fun. I've coached 16 years and out of the 16 years I've coached, um, 10 of those years have been volunteer. I didn't get paid a dime. Um, to me, it's kind of when I when you ask me the question, it's kind of like cheating because I didn't consider that volunteering. I mean, I know that's what I was doing, but I was getting a coach. Um, also, I'm a Shriner. I'm a new Shriner. I'm a new Mason, and uh, we did a toy drive last Christmas for Shriner Hospital um, at our auction house, and it went over really well on Thanksgiving Day. And I got an opportunity to go to Shriner Hospital in Chicago and take the toys up there. And I mean, that puts everything into perspective. It really does. Uh, community service-wise, uh, I've uh, been active in the Akron Lions Club now for uh, probably at least 10, if not 15 years. And that's been a really good organization to be involved in. Uh, one of my co-workers had encouraged me to join the club. And I went to a meeting and I kind of liked it, so it's, I've st stuck with it. At one point I served as the president of the, the club, and the club does a lot of good uh, in the community. We have a monthly fish fry, and the, the proceeds from those fish fries go to benefit different organizations. So it's, it's a really good club. It does a lot for the community. I got talked into volunteer tutoring at the jail, Wabash County Jail and kind of a little bit uh, skeptical about that, doing it. The thing about Wabash, of course, you don't have any big time criminals there. And most of the people in there are young people who have screwed up in drugs and alcohol. And that's one of the things I <laughs> pointed out to leave the kids. Stay away from drugs and alcohol. I've seen so many lives down there that ruin, ruin the lives of these people, their families, the future, you know, stay out of it. So I, I've done that for several years and uh, still doing that. Also, uh, do some things at church, volunteering at church, time there, and, uh, and, and enjoy that too. So, three things I did. Uh, so, currently, I hold an advisory position for my fraternity at Purdue, and we have two organizations at IU, one at IU and one at Purdue. And all the fraternity brothers can reach out to me if they have any questions about academics, um, internships, any forms that they have to fill out. I know somebody reached out to me about how to do taxes after they got their first internship, and I was helping uh, point them in the right direction, and I was able to guide them through those, uh, through those questions. I also volunteer with the Purdue Alumni Association of Connecticut, and we go to local high schools to try to recruit students to come to Indiana to study at Purdue University and uh, every summer we host a picnic where we cook out for the families and all the people that got accepted, all the students that got accepted to Purdue and we give out four scholarships. Like I said, we have a couple dogs. I'm kind of an a animal person so uh, we're both, my husband and I, were both involved in the Humane Societies and Animal Rescue, Rescue Groups in our area, previously in Indianapolis and now in Florida, so we'll work with shelters and uh, do fundraiser walks and things like that. Um, one of the, the most joyful um, volunteer things that I have done for quite a while is with the American Cancer Society and I've coordinated their daffodil sales campaign, their fundraiser. Um, on campus, of course I've now retired so I've got to figure out how to do that in the community, but on, on Casper College campus I was in charge of, of coordinating the daffodil campaign. and. 
Wyoming can have some very long and harsh winters, so it was always very nice in the spring to send out that first email saying it's time to think about flowers, it's time to think about ordering and, and helping the Cancer Society, so I really loved doing that. I've done volunteer work with the Multiple Sclerosis Society in our town, also helping them with their walks. I've been on the boards of directors for various arts organizations, the Casper Community Theater Stage 3 and the Casper College Theater and Dance Programs Board. Probably the most significant volunteer work I have done for many, many years in Casper is work with suicide prevention, both in the community and on campus. We try to walk in arth arthritis foundation walks. We always try to be a part of the Cancer Society's events that we have around the community and take part in a, the Relay for Lives and things of that nature, the Smash Out Cancer event that Beaverdam Church sponsors and things of that nature. Um, I do serve on the board of directors for Kosciuszko RMC, which isn't really a volunteer thing, but it's just kind of a side thing that I enjoy doing, learning about the electric industry and just trying to kind of help the community in that aspect of, I don't know, channeling my energy, I guess. We both work uh, at our church. Um, probably my wife works two days a week and I kind of support that. Uh, I also do some on the side uh, support for uh, Wings of Mercy. It's uh, again attached to my flying. Uh, that would be the two main things that we do. Uh, currently. Biggest sense of pride I would say is my family, uh, my wife and my daughter. Um, we were young parents. Um, I've worked really hard to accomplish what I've accomplished professionally in my career, but I've also worked really hard to accomplish, to keep my family together. All the odds and statistics were against us as young parents. Um, and to see that my daughter's enrolled in college, she's an auctioneer, um, she's a coach, my wife is doing well, our business, um, and we're still together and still like each other after all that stuff, um, that's a good accomplishment for me. Oh, probably the, the greatest sense of pride I have is that I've been able to raise my family in the community that I was born and raised in, and also have a successful career in the community that I was raised in. So. I'm a small town person and I like, I like this area, uh, so it's, that to me is the most rewarding thing. I guess one of the greatest things, uh, looking back at some of the students I had and looking at the accomplishments that, uh, that they've made and what they've done with their life, success that they've had, and uh, I just hope that you were small part to help them in some way. You never know how and when it's going to happen, but hopefully that you did. And uh, I say, I'm glad to see them be good citizens. I think my biggest sense of pride is beating the statistics. Um, starting school without speaking English, and then uh, just seeing the statistics of the underrepresented uh, Latinos out in higher education. I was able to make it out and graduate, and now I'm trying to help and give back to help other people beat their statistics. At the end of the day, uh, each day I go home from work, I'm proud of what I've done. I think even if it's on a small scale in Florida, it makes a difference for the communities that we work in. And so being able to go home each day and know that I was, for lack of a better phrase, fighting the good fight um, really can bring a sense of pride. I worked at Casper College for 26 years and in all but two of those years, I attended graduation ceremonies. I missed when my daughter was born because she was born two weeks before graduation, and I missed when my own son graduated from University of Wyoming down in Laramie. But watching my students walk across the stage and get their degrees was always such a joyful experience for me, particularly because no one else in the audience knew, perhaps, that some of those students had been thinking about taking their own lives a year before that, but I knew. Some of those students were so riddled with anxiety before a test that they were nearly paralyzed. People in the audience didn't know, but I knew. Um, some of those students that were walking across the stage almost dropped out two weeks into the semester because they just didn't believe in myself. and so. Knowing that they came to me for help and I was able to say something or do something 
that gave them the strength or, or gave them the courage or gave them the belief in themselves to keep going and to make it to graduation was a huge sense of pride and accomplishment. Mm -hmm. I really love to help people. Um, I guess that's what it comes down to in general. With whether you're, you know, I worked, I worked through school for an excavation business, and we help people improve their land, right? So people with, you know, as you help clear up their land or make a yard look nice and things of that nature, you had a really good self um, appreciation or whatever you want to say of accomplishment when you see somebody that's happy with a job you perform. You know, when you help them. So that kind of leaked on through my world of physical therapy where we help people every day. And it may not seem like much to some. And, you know, it's just, it's just, I guess it's a huge sense of accomplishment when you take somebody from not being able to walk that's very scared about what's going on to soothing them somewhat, working them through a whole rigorous two or three month process of rehabilitation. And then they walk out you know, feeling great without using crutches, a cane, or a walker, or anything like that. that. That's a nice feeling. So just kind of helping people in that fashion is a, is a good thing. I'm actually very, fine, very uh, proud of the family that I've been able to grow. Uh, I'd also say that uh, my time when I stepped out and decided to start uh, my own company, that was really quite impressive now that I look back on it. I'm not sure that I was... Uh, prepared for all of the challenges and opportunities that provided, but that also is a, a very big uh, feather in my hat, so to speak. Mine would be from sports. Mine, I learned some of my most valuable lessons on a football field. Um, when you are at your most vulnerable spot, um, you're dead tired in conditioning, um, you're down by two touchdowns, uh, you know, you let the team down, you think, um, in a, in a, on a play. Um, those have taught me the, the most valuable lessons in life. Um, those were the most valuable lessons in high school for me. Um, the other part is just to see that teachers, you know, they, you hear teachers care, but to see that people truly do care. Um, and then years later when you're inducted, those people that cared about you then are still caring about you now, so, yeah. As a high school student, I would say the thing that um, helped me most in as far as the, the rest of my life, I would say that getting to know other people, um, whether if, if other people are not in your immediate um, social network, uh, just getting to know everybody. Uh, being friends with different people, getting to know people from different backgrounds, different cultures. Um, I think that was a, something I picked up on early in high school and I think it's uh, served me well throughout my career path. What I learned most was to stay curious. Um, coming into high school is a blank slate and I try to take as many classes as possible to try to learn a diverse set of skills and try to figure out my passion. and. Nothing ever trumped uh, computers. So I try to take all the technology classes, all the science, all the math, all the English and arts, and I just stayed curious and try to learn new things and not staying idle. I think it was being independent and creative. Um, here at, at Valley, we were able to kind of, you know, we were able to choose our classes from freshman year from the outset and, and pick various things that interested us and challenged us and so having that sort of independence um, has really worked in my favor and then also the creativity side of it a lot of the teachers I had um, weren't necessarily always concerned about what the right answer was but how you could get there and why you got there and those two things can take you a long way and I think it's really helped me my I think probably the main thing I had to learn was to believe in myself, um, to believe in my own resourcefulness, to believe in my own intelligence and abilities and, and creativity. I always knew it was there, but I doubted it a lot. I was not good at believing in myself in high school, but those seeds of self-efficacy and self-reliance were planted 
in school by teachers, by coaches, and by my friends. And they did bloom and grow throughout my life. Uh, I like the idea of teamwork. And, you know, high school really channeled that, I guess through sports more than anything, gave you a sense of teamwork, how you, you know, you performed your position or you did what you were supposed to do in a certain position and the other people did their thing and you all came together for this big prize or whatever, you know, to make things work. And I've seen that through life. I mean, that just kind of continues to grow and as you get in your into your profession, whatever it is, you're always working as part of a team, whether it's with your family or whether it's with your co-workers or people in the community and you all kind of just bond together to make everything kind of success successful. You know, it was in high school when I actually started to learn about the many different types of people that there are. And, and I grew up in a very small high school, but there were still many different attitudes and opinions. And until you get an opportunity to actually sit down with people and understand what they're thinking or, or their previous history, it's very difficult. I'm, you can almost be sure that judging them is wrong. One piece of advice for me, if anybody's hardwired like I am, um, I always, I can't stand idle. I always have to be chasing something. Um, if, if it's, uh, I have to set goals and, and reach those. Um, if I don't have goals or I don't have anything that I'm trying to accomplish um, or strive to be a better person, better at, um, it's just mediocre to me. So if I had to tell anybody some advice, reach for the stars and don't ever stop. I mean, just keep going until you find the passion. Um, and then once you find the passion, we're always still learning. So. I would say probably, and I, I mentioned this in our presentations earlier today with, with the students out here, I would say the biggest thing would be uh, to get to know your classmates and respect them and their backgrounds and their skills. Everybody has different skill sets and talents. And, and to get to know those things and appreciate those and respect those things. So that's, that's the point I pretty much feel home with the students today. Um, one thing I heard was there's four, four things in life you cannot recover. The stone after it's thrown, word after it's said, occasion after it's passed, time after it's gone. So these kids, I think what you're doing, you know, in high school, waste time in class, don't do the work and that, you know. It's done, it's gone. You really have lost it. So make the best of your time and hope for the best and do the best you can. Uh, I think what helped me out the most was to stay curious and ask questions. Um, <clears throat> if you ever have doubts or need help, there shouldn't be any hesitation to reach out to anybody and ask questions. They might not know the answer, but they might know somebody else that does and anyone can help each other and we can point each other into the right direction and just build networks and it helps build friendships and it helps you learn. I heard this from an instructor at the academy and I think it's really important and it, and it struck me and now looking back on my life it makes a lot of sense. I was told every decision you make in life is based on fear or love. Most of us disguise those decisions based on fear as practicality. For me, it was the practical choice to be an attorney because I was good at talking and arguing and, and writing and those, those things all seemed to fit. And I disguised that decision and told myself, well, this makes sense. This is the most practical. But once I got into it, I, I realized that maybe it was just the easy decision and that's why I did that. So then when I followed my heart and my passion and took the risk to, to be where I am today, now I'm truly happy with what I do. I'm fulfilled with what I do. And so my instructor, you know, when he said that, it was it's kind of like a light bulb went off in my head that that really is true. And maybe we don't see some of the decisions we make as the fearful ones, but it's usually those easy ones that we say it's practical and it makes sense that we're not pushing ourselves to what we can really be and not pushing ourselves to the fullest potential. I, I think that I would tell students that every day when you wake up, you have a choice of where to put your focus. You have the power of choice. And I would encourage you always to look for 
what's good and what's right with you rather than what's wrong with you and focus there. Choose to see what is good and right with other people. Focus there. Build on that. Choose to see what's good and right in the world and contribute positively to that. There are plenty of people in life who are willing to tell us what's wrong with us. And we need to look at what's right and build up. Whether you want to go to school for a very long time and be a brain surgeon or whether you don't want to go to college at all and you want to be part of the custodial staff at your old school, look for what's good. And when things do go wrong, because they will, choose to look at the feedback rather than focus on failure. Ask what you can do differently to, to achieve your goal the next time. And when things really go wrong, choose to ask for help. There's always, always someone or several someones willing to listen and to understand and help you get back on the right path towards your goals. Follow your instincts, I guess, on the whole passion thing. I like to push that passion because I feel that God gives every single person, whether it's a child or a student in school here or an adult, we all have this inner fight that we're always having with ourselves. You know, what do you really want to do? Well, I don't want to do that. That whole fear, you know, thing, it's kind of there. And I think if you follow your passion, that your God-given gift, you know what it is. You know, you know what you want to kind of tackle in life. Go for it. Gain as much experience and just, you know, follow those dreams because you know, your options are really limitless. Uh, every day when you get up in the morning, and I think I've heard this before, but it's so true, uh, <clears throat> you have a new day, it's the present day. You want to take that opportunity to add something to your life that you can look back on tomorrow that will still be there. And uh, I've studied for many years, and I, I was talking to a gentleman here who taught math, and uh, we were commiserating, and it, and it hasn't really been that long since I took my last math class, and it's not because I took it at school. <laughs>